Walk up in this bitch like, yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like, bitch, I'm really him, oh God. Walk in this bitch like, yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like, bitch, I'm really him, oh God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Rush. It's your boy, Max Crosby. I'm here in the building with my brothers, Brogan Roback, Darian Terrell. There it is. Mm -hmm. God bless America. It's election night, so uh, big night. Um, we, we apologize for being a day late. We had some business that we had to handle uh, yesterday, but we are here and live in full effect. And let's just get right to it. Um, address the elephant in the room. Obviously, some changes are made. Um, on the offensive side of the ball, we, you know, got rid of three of our coaches, um, and we're trying to find solutions. So really can't elaborate too much on that. Um, I try to stick to, you know, my side of the ball as much as I can when it comes to, you know, influence and things like that. Um, but it's tough, man. You know, for me, it's, it's all about production and that's all I care about at the end of the day. Um, and we got to find ways to win. I mean, it's, it's tough, man. Two and seven, it's literally unacceptable. So um, I think the whole Raider Nation knows this. Um, but I'm I'm never going to stop. You know what I mean? My approach never changes. I'm going to keep getting better and better every single game and continue dominating. And that's my approach on a daily basis. And I feel bad for the fans. It's terrible i mean i never expected to be in this position um but we got to find ways to continue improving because the season's not over we're halfway there um but there's a lot of football to be played so um, i'm looking forward to it you know we got a bye week this week and to get the body right take care of the body um and continue working and come back you know 100 percent the ankle's feeling a lot better um but it's you know this time is definitely necessary i need to get a <laughs> Need to get this thing 100% and just keep doing what I'm doing. You know what I mean? All the work that's been put in, that doesn't go out the window when times get hard. Um, my goals and everything haven't changed. And for the fans, um, I feel bad. You know, it's it's unfortunate and it's shitty. And I feel for y'all. And it's unacceptable. So I'll just leave it at that. And um, I'll give the floor to you guys. I think... Uh... We're not going to harp on it, obviously, too much, like you said. The only thing I want to ask you, Max, because you've been – we've talked about this, the man in the arena. You've been the last one standing, and I know that's frustrating as f sometimes, and I'm sure it is for the fans as well. But four of the f last five seasons, bro, there's been in-season changes. So just as a player, to give people perspective into your brain, in, into your locker room, like how does that impact the mind of those of those players, even the coaches that are still remaining and – more so, how does it affect you individually? And like, how do you continue to just overcome these things? And I almost see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, as f***ed up as it is, I mean, it's become like the normal, um, yeah. <laughs> which is not good. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, it's it's just the reality of what I've experienced so far in the league, you know, being with the Raiders. Um, there's been a lot of change constantly. Um, some of it, Due to performance, obviously some other just craziness going on. Um, just a mixture of all that. But um, individually, like, y'all know my approach. I, it never changes. Like, regardless of the circumstances and situations, like, I'm going to find a way to be at my best. And it starts with the work on a daily basis. So that never changes. And my approach, you know, never changes. And, um is, you know, I feel like in the long run, all this shit happens for a reason. And it's made me a lot stronger. It's made me a better leader. It's made me a better person. Just being around a lot of chaos, um, to say the least. Um, but being able to bring the guys together and, and try to flourish in unfortunate circumstances. So for me, um, yeah, it kills me inside. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and act like the shit's all good and everything will be fine. And hopefully it works out. Like, no, I want to win like I've said it over and over again I just want to win that's literally why I do this I train all year round to win and be the best captain leader player I could possibly be and I know what the fuck I bring to the table and 
that's about getting everybody on the same board. And that's not just players, it's coaches, it's front office, it's everybody. So, um, I, I, you know, I feel like my impact, um, is extremely important to what we do. And I, I take it very seriously. You know, I try to, uh, a touch and affect every single person I can in that building and, you know, show them what I've done to get to my position. And I want others that think like that. And that's what I'm in control of. You know, there's a lot of shit that is uncontrollable. Um, and I stay in my own lane. Um, but at the end, at, at the end of the day, like you can't walk by a mistake. Um, you can't walk by, you know, mediocre shit and, expect change without addressing it. And, uh, that's what I, that's what I literally do on a daily basis. So sometimes, you know, you look, you're looked at as a, you know, as an asshole. Sometimes you looked at as, you know, as, well, why, what's Max mad about now? It's just like, no, like I have put my life into this shit and I, I truly, this is everything I ever work for and what I want, like, and I'll never stop fighting. Um, so that's just what it really comes down to. So yeah, we have a lot of shit we got to figure out. Bye week would be good. People get away, get, you know, get away from football for a little bit. But um, once we come back, like it's, we're guns blazing. You know what I mean? It's eight games left, two months of football. And, um, you know, then we go from there. But right now I'm just focused on, you know, on a personal level, just getting everybody on the, on the same, on the same boat and continue getting better. Facts. When we, uh, I got a quick question for you about the game. Right. When I was watching it from home, they made it sound like the whistle was blown on that hit on Joe Burrow. What actually happened on that play? And talk to us about that interaction. They they, they kept replaying you guys dapping each other up, talking about it. He seemed like he handled it well. What happened on that play? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I jumped off sides. I was a little bit early. Um, I was like about a half second early on the, on the count. And, um, I'm going a hundred miles an hour, you know what I mean? Flying towards the quarterback and everyone was still playing. You know what I mean? He's still looking downfield, holding the ball. There was no whistle until I hit him. So in my head, like, I'm not going to stop. And then all of a sudden he launches it downfield in a free play and they score a touchdown. Like they should, they should have blown the whistle. And I, and I don't know if they talked that's about it. That's literally a responsibility. So mm -hmm. then they said, Oh, here comes max. And then they want to, you know, then blow the whistle and then throw a flag. I thought it was, you know, I thought it was bullshit, but it is what it is. And, you know, it, they called a penalty. Even Burrow said in the press conference, he's like, I didn't hear a whistle either. So, I mean, it is what it is. It just, uh, it happens fast. Um, you know, I really could have hit him even harder. You know what I mean? I tried to pull off at the last second when I heard it, but it was just, I'm going a hundred miles an hour. So it was what it was. Um, it's the unfortunate part is I can't jump off sides. Um, you know what I mean? I feel like, I do a very good job of being disciplined on the field and not, you know, I, I that was my first offsides of the, of the, of the year. Um, so it's just shitty, especially in that situation, you know, it gives them momentum. Um, so for me, like I take that, you know, that's the part that pisses me off more than anything. Like I hurt the team in that situation. So it just, uh, just thing that I gotta, gotta clean up. And, you know, at the end of the day, like Joe's a competitor. That's the one thing I respect about him. Like, he wasn't bitching and crying. Like he, he stood up and dapped it up in the whole game. Like I was, I hit him multiple times. I was in his face a lot. And he's like, I'm getting rid of it. I said, shit. I said, it's the ones you don't see. So I, I may have made, like made that sure one. he knew that, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I respect him though. You know what I mean? He's, he's one of those guys that I, I highly respect. He plays the game the right way. And he, he's, he's a true competitor. So yeah, I got a number of respect for him. Yeah, talking about you were close, the one in the red zone when you came to the sidelines and we both were, that's not me, you know, we weren't doing a shrimp check. We were literally saying you were that close. Mm. I mean, he got rid of it down the red zone or whatever. Yes. Um, yeah, you were you were buzzing around out there. That's This is my question. How did it feel to be back in Ohio, a great state of Ohio? Damn right. Um, and play football in the Midwest because obviously – People go crazy on the west side. Allegiant Stadium gets rocking with Raider Nation, and Raider Nation traveled to Ohio very well. But what what was it like playing inside there? Because I know you haven't done it a whole lot. Yeah, I love it. You know what I mean? Like, I somebody just asked the me this just today. Different. Yeah, the air is just different. The energy is different. Fresh. It's all ball. Like, everyone is there tailgating. You drive up to the stadium. There's people everywhere. 
all just slamming brewskis and talking shit, flipping <laughs> off people, you know what I mean? And as we drove by, like, I love that shit. And I, it's like what I'm used to. And it's like real football weather, like 50 degrees, whatever it was. Like, that's that's what football is to me. And that's what I grew up, you know, being in Michigan. So I love it. You know what I mean? I love playing in that type of environment. And you could just feel the energy in the building. Like, it's hostile. Dudes are motherfucking you from the crowd. Like, it's, it, it's funny. So... I love that type of energy. So it was great. Like I, I love playing in the Midwest every time I get to come out here. Like, and especially this time of the year, like it starts to get a little chilly and it just, it's football weather. So it is. Yeah. It no, was so I, nice. I Dude, I was sweating. It actually, I had a jacket and I had to take it off. It was like, what? 72 and sunny. Yeah. I was, was going to say, yeah, it, it, it was supposed to be like 50 something. And then it ended up being like seventies, a little breeze. It was, it was actually nice. Something about it. I said something about it. It was 78 degrees here today in Ohio yeah, in November. It's bananas. Bro, and you're, you're detail-oriented um, like myself. Please tell me you looked at each end zone stands at some point. They, are those slanted? Or they look crooked as shit in that stadium. Like, I literally was looking and seeds? literally – Yeah, literally it starts up here and then it goes all the way down here. I, I kept tapping alley. I'm like – <laughs> Someone messed up, right? Like, I don't there's, know. it looked like he was tipping. Yeah, no, it, it definitely, it's a different feel in there, and it did, it, it did look a little. I don't know. I feel like they were like on top of each other. I don't know. It was weird, yeah. but no, their stadium's dope. That's it's a. Uh, last time I was there was a playoff game when we played. Yep. We played Cincy, and it was a cold ass game. Great fucking right down to the end, like. That was the only playoff game I played in was there in Cincy. So I remember last time I was there, uh, me and a, a good amount of fans were going back and forth and I'm mother people and all type <laughs> of shit just in my element. So it was, uh, it was great. It was great. Yeah. And I got to see Gary yeah. Owen. I mean, legend. For me. Yeah. Bro, by the way, did we did he slide out the back door when you came over and said what's up to us after the game? Because it was right by the bus. Yeah, he, uh, he texted me, I think – either the day of like that morning that he was going to be there or like day before or something. But he's hit, he hit me up a couple months ago and was just like, Bro, I'll f- with you. He was just like, hit me up <laughs> on some random shit. Um, and so we became, you know, we became cool and just stay in contact. And he's, he's, he grew up a Bengals fan. So, you know, unfortunate for him, but he, uh, <laughs> you know, he hit me up. We got the link out to the game and shit and shoot the shit. And he's, he's hilarious, bro. He's an all time. So yeah, and you had him. Shibuzi on the field with you beforehand. Shibuzi. Hell yeah, Shibuzi, legend. Tall as hell. Tall as hell. <laughs> looks like an NBA hell. player. Um, but yeah, he's dope. I got to I got to meet him at the Aces game when me and uh, Theo Vaughn went to that game. Shibuzi happened to be sitting next to us. Yeah, it was a very random assembled what crew. What a crew! Me, what Shibuzi, crew. and Theo Vaughn. This is all time, um, all time trio. But yeah, we he happened to be there when we went and. We we're just shooting the shit, and then you know he's asking. He's like, "Man, where'd you get your chain from, bro? I gotta, I gotta get in contact, whatever." Which so one? So he he gave yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but he he shot me his number, and we we've been in contact, and we've you know we actually we stay in contact often, and like seeing the shit he's doing is crazy. He's the number one song in the country. Like he's really killing shit, and he's really humble. Like he's a he's a good dude, and um, he's a football fan and everything. So. It was the same thing. He hit me up like the night before. He's like, yo, what are you doing? And I'm like, shit, I'm in Cincinnati about to play. You know, we play the Bengals tomorrow. He's like, bro, I'm here. I had a show or he, he was doing something out there. And he's like, you help, you help me. You hook me up. I'm like, shit, I got you. I was like, let me see what I can do. So shout out to Bob Ceridi, our, our you know, with the Raiders, our security guy, um, putting it together. But got to chop it up with him before the game, too. So that shit was dope. Bob. Yeah, hey, two guys that need to be on the rush this offseason right there. Gary Owen and Shibuzi, in my opinion. 100%. Honda P. Right, D? Yeah, they, to. they got to be in Vegas. They got to be in yeah. Vegas. And I talked to him. He's like, bro, I'm going to hit you. Next time I'm coming to Vegas, we got we to gotta kick it. I'm like, all right. So we we, we definitely we, we got to make that happen. We need Shibuzi. We need to, we need the history of Shibuzi because I feel like he got so Facts. big so fast. Like We need to really know. Blew up on the spot, dude, bro. broke He's down some barriers. Too. He was, he was there. Yeah, that would be legendary. And I got. Gary, I mean, Gary's fucking. That's awesome. a given. Every single show he's on is just pure comedy. That bro. dude is just like authentically funny. You don't need to put a script or write jokes. That motherfucker is just funny. 
one hundred percent. The one with Charlemagne's got to be the funniest. Like, he said, <laughs> he's like his body wouldn't allow him to lie. That <laughs> shit was. The, he's like, he's been loyal for six years. <laughs> and spit out the water. That shit was classic. Bro, oh, yeah, that is so funny, All bro. Time. Did you feel like low key with the game? Did you feel like you're about to get your uh, first career thick six? It's weird calling it thick oh six with God. you, dude. You're not. I'm slim bro. Fit, you bro. grab. I'll you grab this. Joe. I'm bro. like, find the. I was like, get it, <laughs> bro. I, All I, I see is Max look at the replay. You might be mad that I'm going to say this, but I see you look at the replay, and whoever didn't catch the ball, probably a great person, great player. Um, just goes through the hands. Do you see Max go look at the replay because he can't see that? I mean, he goes, oh, <laughs> I did it and all. I know in his head, he's like, oh, catch the f-ing ball. Oh, that's such a I reactive right play. There. Yeah, it, I mean, it just happened so fast. And, like, they ran, like, a little – they tried to, like, hinge block with the tackle to try to, you know, f- with me. And I, I sniffed it out in a heartbeat. And I beat him around the edge, and I was just – the ball hit me, like, right in the f- face. I was right there. And I just hear, it hits my head, and then I hear, like, you could hear the crowd, like, gasp. And I'm like, where the f*** is the ball? And I I could not find the ball. And it was a mile in the air, and I just grabbed Burrow, and he, like, is holding onto me. And I low-key threw him into Jonah. If I didn't, like, pull him to the side, Jonah would have ran clean, and it would have been a touch, like, literally would have been a touchdown. But he still yeah. he still should have caught it. I gave him a lot of shit. He's a rookie. You got to dive. You got to show a little commitment. Just no, he dive. did. He did dive. But was it a delayed dive? It, it was like slightly it. delayed. But like his legs almost got <laughs> taken out by Burrow, who I slung into him. So okay. it slightly was my fault. But like I'm just trying to throw the and Jonah. But we watched it in film, and he had it. He low key had it in his hands. He could have he could have caught it. And we were giving him a bunch of shit in meetings today, but. It was uh, it was good. I mean that that play that could have been a game changer though. Like that's another one. Like I've I batted a, a, a I think four or five this year, and like those are big plays, bro. And we got to start getting turnovers. So whatever the fuck I got to do, I got I got to get the ball. You know what I mean? I've been and so it, close so many times. I just got to I got to keep just hunting the ball, and it's still eventually come. Do you only have one in your lifetime where you scored on defense? I know Eastern. You picked the one off against Akron. Is yeah, right? yeah, we played. Up? I picked off the screen versus Akron. I've scored two touchdowns. Like Jack though. Jones did, by the way. That play yeah. was sick. Jack had a pick six, but yeah, I had the one versus Central too, where we went to Central yeah. and I stripped the good and scooped it. Was it Shane Morris? Central. Low key, it was Shane Morris. High key, yeah, it was Shane Morris. <laughs> I made Central. The God. ship was our plan right now. Maxion is back, by the way. Everybody. They're playing so, right now yeah, Tuesday? they're playing Bowling Green yeah. at well, Central. I did, I did see that, and they were like big underdogs. Yeah, they not good yeah. this year. No, it Four was and yeah. And then you got Miami of Ohio playing at Ball State. God, I love. You that. remember what happened election night? Yeah, a couple so, years well, back it was election night. We it's, were in ball, at Muncie, Muncie, Indiana versus Ball State. We came Brogan, back one of Brogan's career, best career games ever. Came back from how many were we down? 21. 21. 21. 12 goes and throws. I threw the ball like... 72 times. <laughs> what? So... Oh, yeah. I threw the ball 72 th- times. And you know what's crazy? What? I'm looking up it's these about... stats right now. Continue, though. I threw for like 490 something, maybe, or around that. And Dooley dropped probably three 70 yard bombs that he was gone on. <laughs> yep. him right on God the rest his soul. That's God um, rest his soul. That's what Brogan's yeah. doing in the post game interview. I'm behind him throwing water. Do you like that? You like yeah, that? You, were, you and Herkham. <laughs> 71 passes. You were 37 71. of 71 for 468 yards and three touchdowns. We won 48 to 41 and became bowl eligible. It was an electric factory on election night. We had the wow. nice little, little E on there. That was election night. I remember going in the locker room. That was when uh, Trump got, he that was his officially first won. Elected. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's crazy? It's going to sound weird at home, but I just knew going in that game. You know when it like rains early on, but then it doesn't, and it like it stops, and the ball was just sticky, and you're spinning it. I'm like, this is the best of football has ever felt in my hand. Pause. Diddy. Nope, Diddy. That was above. that was a tough series. How of else comments. am I supposed to explain it? I don't know, but it was like one Other pause, than a sticky ball. two Here pauses, two three pauses. Five later, yeah. <laughs> I got to jump. You know me, that. boys. I'll try anything twice. <laughs> Okay. (laughs) 
I, Max, I'm glad that you remember <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, you need help. Anyway, on to our next segment. <laughs> Sticky balls. All right, let's go. Sticky ball. That, sh- that should be a new segment. You guys put down in the comments if you would love to have a sticky ball segment. And we'll talk about you patting the ball around. Got to have those sticky fingers. Just like think, Home Alone. I, no. I don't think we're going to do that. No. Sticky no. bandits? No. The sticky bandits. It's a dream come true. You guys true. are uncultured, as I can tell. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> I have no comment. Anyway, next. It takes balls to sack a quarterback. It takes Saks underwear to support your balls. I've teamed up with Saks as their newest ambassador to bring you game-changing underwear. Saks underwear is versatile and comfortable. I wear it to train, hang out, and even sleep. They've got a pair for everything, and it allows me to be limitless every day. Use my code, the Rush 24 for 15% off at Saks.com. Saks underwear with the ballpark pouch changes the game. Period. We are, uh... You guys are haters. Did you guys watch the... I know we hyped up the Penn State, Ohio State. It was going to be a matchup. I thought Penn State was going to come in and, and take that at home. Did you guys watch that game? Right here, Dan. Oh, Lord. The f- What's up, Nate Diaz? Do you think... Max. Books. 20 to 13. What did you say, 12? Sorry. Oh, sorry. When you did this, though, please tell me you saw Nate Diaz's story where he, his fan wanted his gloves autographed, so Nate Diaz made him put gloves on in the street, and he's just <laughs> taking them down on the sidewalk. No, he wasn't. No, he's he's messing with them. He's not actually, like, yeah. hitting them, really, but – and they stood him up, and they gave him. I love that. He said, I'm going to make you work for Nate it. Diaz thing ever. Do you think that the Ohio State Buckeyes, after watching these games that they they played – my opinion is it, it's for later. But do you think that they are the national champion front runner right now? They could Oregon be, bro. They could be. I mean, this is the thing. They had Oregon. Their one loss, they and low key had them. They blew that shit. High key had them. They don't get that penalty. It. They, it's they hit the field goal. They win. Yeah, they f- that up. Mm-hmm. And then they go on the road versus Penn State and win and hold them to thirteen. Like their defense is their their defense is great. Mm-hmm. And they got enough weapons on offense. I just the question it comes down to Will Howard is he is he that guy? And I think it's really going to come down to whether they win it all or not. So it's I still have my question marks, but they're they're bro they're they're like that. They're just they're not that like dominant that. Ohio State team where you where you see them. They play down to competition a lot, or if yeah. another team's making mistakes, they don't capitalize. They don't play first half very well, so. It's just – I'm interested to see how it plays out, but I'll give them a fair chance. Penn State's a good program, though. They are. No, Penn State's legit. It was a battle of two coaches that really don't win big games, so one of them had to win. One Fox. of them did. James That's Franklin's been getting murdered. murdered. They were killing he, him as he's, he's leaving the, the field. Bro, oh, yeah. Berating, said, the fans berating What's your him. name? Tell me yeah. your name, tough guy. Oh, you're, you're man enough. Tell me your name. You're I like man that. I, I like okay. that. I like that. I like that, though. These motherfuckers are human beings. I'm going to talk back. I'm not yeah. your puncher bag. Yeah. Cam Ward, 21-17, down at halftime. Okay? They come back, win 31-53. He threw for 400 yards and five touchdowns. Diffy. Give me your re-rank right now of the Heisman. <laughs> I mean, I think it's him. I think it's been him damn near the whole year. I mean, it's between him and and uh, Boise, dude. Genty. Yeah. Genty. <laughs> And, and Travis yeah, Hunter and is Jeff, up there. And Travis Hunter. Travis now, Hunter's probably three. I'll put – if Genty keeps going at this rate, I mean, he's he has to win it because it's not even – he's breaking records. record. Boise keeps winning because you know how that goes with the Heisman race. It's all about if your team's successful, which yeah. it shouldn't be that way. No. It shouldn't be. I agree. It should be the best player in your performance. But it's going to come down to that. And honestly, Travis, I think, is falling out of the top three just because what do you do? He missed like two weeks and then he, he was limited for one game. But he, I mean, when he's tough. on the field, he's he's ridiculous. He's different. He's that, going for 102 touchdowns and locking up at corners. An impossible pick. That was going to be my question, is if, if Miami loses, they are undefeated, and I know that that helps with a lot of these, these rankings with the Heisman. Will that drop them out of contention and make it more of an even playing field if they lose to, say, Louisville just comes out and beats Clemson at home, right? They have – they have Clemson to play. They got, beat. they got some. They got a world of problems. Yeah, they do. But they have uh, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, and Syracuse left on the schedule. If they oh, lose they any know. three of those, if they do, does that affect this Heisman race? I think so. 
unfortunately, but I think he's going to win out. If they go 12-0, and 0, he's winning the Heisman. Yeah. Because I know just what, what he's done so far, his numbers are ridiculous, and he's just going to keep putting up numbers. If he keeps doing what he's doing, it's going to be hard because their team is ranked so high. They're going to be a top two, top three team. You know what I mean? If they go undefeated. So mm-hmm. that's the hardest thing. The only thing with Boise's guy, I, I just said I'm contradicting myself. I go, well, he's breaking records. But at the same time, like he is at Boise, which will be used against him. And his, his, he's not an undefeated team. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's both of those things are going to, they're going to, I feel like carry some weight because like even with Jordan Lynch, when he was at NIU, nobody's stats touched his stats. Yeah. But he was at NIU. He was you know Tim I mean? Tebow. He was Tim Tebow of the Mac. Literally though. He no, was untouchable. Legitimate. We had to play him. He was he was <laughs> different. He was different. Yeah. I want to look up his Army's stats. Army's still undefeated if you guys are even remotely one. Army so Army's balling. That's a question as well. Is can Army make the playoffs if they continue yeah. to win out? Yeah. Yeah, they're Do you think ranked. they're a team? Yeah, they are, yeah, but I they, oh. they they're uh, 18th right now. Yeah, I'm they go 12 and 0. They have to. Team playoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have to make it. And could you imagine, bro, how f- mad you would be as an opposing team that you draw Army first round of the college football playoffs? Like we know, we play them all the time. We play them all the time. So it's like there's nothing worse. You're an install in camp, and you trickle it. You're you're, you're working on the triple option defense. Bro, Jordan Lynch's stats, he makes Tim Tebow's stats look bad. Oh, yeah. He was, he was untouchable. This is the thing I've ever read in my life. Bro, he threw <laughs> – I'm sorry, I'm sidetracked a little bit. He threw for 3,100 yards, 25 touchdowns, six picks, and ran for 1,800 yards and 19 touchdowns. Yep. Then the next year has 2,900, 24 touchdowns and eight picks. Then runs for 1,920 yards and 23 touchdowns. He literally had two Heisman seasons at two different positions. Yeah. He's a, bro, that's ridiculous. He was disgusting. Yeah. That, when they were so cold, that was my first career start in college, and he was going a wall against us, bro, which at that time was not hard to do. But Yeah, but that one. He was running the ball. like They had like a Kansas State-type offense. Like They literally were just running the ball. He ran the ball almost 300 times. Each of those yeah. seasons. That's ridiculous. But speaking of Kansas State, I like Avery Johnson, their quarterback. Yeah. He's only a sophomore. He can't I cut think the he's flow. Clean. He is clean. He can never cut the flow. No, he has Look to keep it you saw Ewers, Quinn Ewers did it and Well. He looks yeah. like Buddy from uh <laughs> He looks like the dude no. from <laughs> Avery Johnson looks like the guy who's playing the quarters game with michael jordan in the last dance with the yeah. curly <laughs> this guy he looks like him <laughs> is he mixed <laughs> i think so i i think so so yeah, is that what my kid would look like like complexion and all that yeah i don't know yeah I, honestly light. i think your kid's gonna have red no he might, he might, come on like he might, have, he might be like, like slightly <laughs> orange yeah. the path you were going yeah it's gonna happen okay no what D. You disrespect Let's gingers? talk about E. Like, what the... <laughs> Not gingers. Just, just jaundice. Do you think that Indiana has an opportunity to, to compete in the Big Ten championship game against either Ohio State or Oregon? Yes. Yes. In I'll the... let you go. I'll let you go, bro. Sorry, I'm being annoying. I'm just no. hype over here. No, please be annoying and be hype. We love it. Um, and yeah, I think Indiana's they're favored legit, 14 bro. and a half points on Michigan this year. They've never been favored that many points on Michigan ever. 14 mm-hmm. points at home. They're number eight, nine, nine and all right now in Michigan. They're That's at the, nuts. they're at the big house, 14 and a half point line. It says they're at Indiana on here. Yeah. I think they might be at, yeah, they're at Indiana. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But still, their and, quarterback is going nuts. He, it, wasn't he at Ohio? Yeah. What's wasn't he a twin? He was a What's Bobcat. Rourke. Cade Rourke. Yeah, that's or something. his brother. That's his little or brother. Or Curtis Rourke. Oh, it's his younger that's brother. His little brother. Okay. Yeah. Bro, he has 19 Older touchdowns and three picks. Canadian, eh? He's yeah. from, from balling. From Oakville, bro. Ontario. Yeah, Oakville, Ontario. 91.6 QBR, second in the country. Damn. So He's you think that they have an opportunity to play in the Big Ten championship game against one of the two? Absolutely. It's about 
in time, bro. I'm sick of seeing Iowa get obliterated by any team they play in the. <laughs> like, I respect Iowa. Like, I like the way, like, their defense is always great, but, like, yeah. they never compete. It's never a real game, but Indiana lights shit up. And it's finally yeah. somebody on that side because it's obviously, I don't even know what the Big Ten looks like now. There's 18 teams. So. That's why it's it's interesting. But speaking of Iowa, yeah. these guys, the last, three of the last four weeks, they have put up 40 points on offense. Redefining Iowa football. So they beat Wisconsin 42-10, smacked with, uh, Northwestern 40-14, and then they beat Washington 40-16. to So three of the last four, they've put up 40. Iowa. Iowa. The Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hawkeyes are six and three. Oh my God. The running back's going nuts. Mm-hmm. The Iowa's? running back, bro, he has 170 carries for 1,300 yards and 19 touchdowns already. They're getting back Dude, to Iowa games. football. What the f? 7.5 yards a carry. Jeez. In the Big Ten. That's ridiculous. Impressive. Look at this, though. I'm going to share this really quick because we're talking about college football. Oh, bro, look at this. Wow. Look at you, bro. Again, I'm proud this of you. Is good. We need this to do is this good. more often. What the f? <laughs> if you guys tell me. Oh, well, yeah. Do start doing this more. We need to start. Doing I more. like this. I like, so, I like this a lot. Little college football rankings. They just dropped it before we came on the show tonight, actually. And uh, one thing I'm really pissed off about is there's no f- uh, army. See? Yeah. They're not there yet, though. I mean, there's 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 still some time. They got they got some so I mean, they're gonna win out. They're gonna for be the good. for the visual or let's just send this in here so we can get it edited the graphic edited in. But what we have is the first round is Indiana versus Tennessee, Ohio State versus Boise, Texas versus Bama, Penn State versus Notre Dame, and then oh a bye is Oregon takes the winner of Indiana, Tennessee, BYU takes the winner of Ohio State and Boise State. Miami oh takes the winner of Alabama and Texas, which will be a my shootout job. and then georgia takes the winner of penn state notre dame you See, know max sees his cougars in there happen. penn state notre dame get them both out of there i'm sick of yeah notre them. dame can't make that notre, oh, no. dame. This... notre dame wiggles their way in with their easy ass schedule i'm sick of seeing them me too i'm yeah. sick of seeing them at penn state i don't want to watch them either <laughs> they're there out you go. you're That's all the way out on them all the way but look at Ohio State, Boise. Is a, is Boise, what are they, 8-1? and one? No, they're undefeated. They're undefeated. Okay, so then Gentry oh, might let win. Let me scroll I'd down. Take away look, everything I just said. Here you go. Here's your record. No, Boise 7-1. and one. Okay. Yeah. Who, who was their they're loss to? One. Let me look. They, mu- they lost to a good team. I know that. But that's, bro, that's Did- huge. If Boise gets in, then oh. Gentry might win the f- Heisman. Bro. They lost to Oregon by three. That says it all right there. Oh, yeah, they're like that. Yeah, they're that says it all. Like yeah. yeah. Was it a close game, D? 37 to 34. By three. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Oregon was playing a little slow in the beginning of the year. Facts. I, I like their that. head coach. I do like their head coach. Yeah, he's, he's like he's that. A G. He's a G. Yeah. Hey, one guy we haven't been talking about who I'm a big fan of also, who I think I'm pretty sure he's going to go to the draft next year. Jackson Dart, Ole Miss's quarterback. Mm. Oh, they don't USC. talk about him for some they reason. They don't. Like they do, but they don't mention him as an NFL guy like Shador and Cam. Like I'm like, no. why? What am I missing? What he's Bro, what he's, he's doing crazy. out there is literally putting on for his other his receivers. His receiver Jordan Watkins, eight receptions, 254 yards, and five touchdowns. Wow. Like Dart is Jesus. out there dealing. Bro, he's dealing. Look at his numbers. Thirty two hundred yards, Arkansas. twenty-one touchdowns, and only three picks. Yeah. They got a big game this weekend, right? Aren't they playing Bama? Mm-hmm. Uh oh. No, they play Georgia. Oh, Georgia. Georgia. And then we're gonna get into that. We're gonna talk about that game here here up next. But I, I do want to get your thoughts on somebody like we always talk about Brogan, the development of quarterbacks in the NFL, things of that nature. Does someone like Lane Kiffin really allow these quarterbacks to shine and then it's kind of I don't want to say a disservice but puts them behind the eight ball when they don't get that level of like concentration when they get to the next level I think Max you you know too I know you're on the other side of the ball but you can definitely attest to this I don't think it's I think it's the way that their offense is you know they spread them out five wide you can almost put them in like the um I'm, I'm blanking here but like they 
it's so quick, like quick game. It's just like one term. It's one term, and they know what they're doing. And so when you get to the league, it's the playbook, in my true opinion. So yeah. then these guys are thinking, yeah, and they're not used to thinking, and now they're not just showing their true talent. So I just think like there's a difference between playbook and the way that things are communicated. You know, whether that be through play call, they don't give quarterbacks more than likely two plays at, in the huddle that it's like, hey, run this, and we're going to can to this play if they give us a certain look, or even for example. If they're measure, we're, let's run the ball, and if we're going to be quick with the next play, I'm going to give you two plays in the huddle so we can just get up there, and I'm not orchestrating like trips right, trips right, or whatever the mm-hmm. it is. That we're just playing, so there's just more. I mean, the NFL, you know how it is, Max. They break things down and they simplify it. They simplify it. They simplify it. Like they are yeah. constantly breaking shit down. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. That's the thing. I that's the tough thing because you've seen you've seen it in the past like there were these quarterbacks coming from Houston or like Case Keenum throwing six thousand yards basically and setting yeah. all these records, but they're just running five wide, quick game, quick game. Texas Tech, Graham Harrell, Colt Brennan in Hawaii, like those Colt systems Brennan. don't you remember? R.I.P. Legend, R.I.P. yeah, R.I.P. Legend. legend. But like guys like that in those systems, they were they don't translate directly to the NFL. So that's why people, I mean, people had their concerns about Mahomes coming from tech. They're like, well, Mahomes is in, you know, typical Texas tech quarterback is going to put up crazy numbers and blah, blah, blah. But I think it, it, every, like every factor matters, like him going with Andy Reid and being able to sit and mm-hmm. learn and okay, this is what he's used to. Let me tend to his strengths. And you know what I mean? Like that's what yes. a quarterback needs. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. tough when you get a guy who's in a simpler offense, like you said, like in those college spread, throw the, ball and then they go to a system like no this is the only way we run it and da 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 you got to know all this shit and then it slows them down then they struggle and then you start with their mind and then then you wonder why there's bust you know what i mean so yep. that all that shit ties into it and i think as you know i'm not a gm or head coach but like i'm not stupid i know football and i've seen it, it happen to a be. lot of guys yeah i want to be a gm um <laughs> but like for real like that that shit really does play a part you know what i mean the development part the okay, we're going to help this guy out and make it as simple as possible and Mm -hmm. start little and then build on it instead of giving them a million things and then Mm -hmm. trying to just figure it out. It's like, I feel like that's what like the elite coaches do. You see Andy Reid, you see Mm -hmm. Shane Steichen, you see um, Sean McVay, uh, Kevin O'Connell, like all those quarterbacks, no matter who they have, uh, Cliff Kingsbury, another one. All the quarterbacks they get, they all have success. And there's it's a clearly they're doing it the right way and yeah, tending to the strengths of their quarterbacks and then building off it. I agree. And it's really the protection too on top of it. Because Max, when you go against a rookie quarterback, I mean the hot routes, like you don't have those really in college. Some places probably do that are more NFL ready or have guys that are more NFL ready, like a Bama, Georgia. They might, but you're probably salivating when you get a rookie quarterback because they're, they might not always know where the slide's going, if it's going the right way, and then also who's hot, who's not. And I'm sure you're like, yeah, let me get, let me, let me pick this guy's brain quite a bit here. You know, when you go against them. Yeah, no, that's that's the thing. Like, I think you know, just seeing from afar, like, um, you know, uh, Sean Payton's done a good job with Bo Nix. Like, keep, you know, they've, yeah. you could tell they're sprinkling a little bit more every single week, but he, I think he's done a good job of like keeping it simple uh, early on, getting the run game going, and then, you know, you could tell Bo's smart. Sean McVay's or Sean Payton's been around for a long time. Like you could tell they're, they're starting to do things the right way and they're doing it the right way. But I, I agree. Like ma- majority of young guys, like you see, they come in, they struggle, they get too much on their plate. And then it's just like, Oh, f- and they're lost yeah. out there. And um, you know, it happens all the time. Um, like even just playing like the last two weeks I played with Burrow, I played Mahomes, and like the command, like even especially Burrow, like last week, like he's, First play of the game, he had like three different fucking checks in the first snap. He yeah. called three different audible. All right, da, 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 180, da, da, da. goes up, sees, okay, boom, he's checking. The, like he has full command. And that's another coach, uh, Zach Taylor. Like he's a great coach. Um, and you could tell they're doing the right things. And yeah, it's just, yeah, I think that it's super important. Like you got to give them the keys, but at the same time, like simplify it. You know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. Well, we might as well stay on the NFL train here at this point. And you know how much I love LeBron, right? Some might borderline call it glazing. I'm not going to go there. But, borderline, but yeah. yeah 
<laughs> but did Mahomes last night kind of pull LeBron? Like, you know, limping off, getting helped off, and then he went right back in. He went right saying. back in and won the game. Was he just doing a little – he threw a touchdown when he got hurt, which is, of course, a Mahomes thing to do. No, that was cool. But I know he was actually hurt, but you get what I mean, you know, a little. Yeah, a little he, uh, he's, he sprained his ankle last week, so I don't know. With the ankle sprain, like, I think he has a low ankle sprain. Um, mm-hmm. But – any, I mean, high ankles are even worse. I, I could tell you personally, but like certain times, like you, you'll be out there running, you're feeling good, and then you just plant one way, and it's like, you know, you just get a shooting pain up your fucking whole leg. Your shit just turns off. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. Like, I know he's dealing with the injury, um, and playing through it. So, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think he pulled a LeBron. I think it's real. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love how you clarified that. I, I know. Why did you do? He had to add that. In what do you mean? Room. That's okay. just you. You're the one that said LeBron fakes the you shit. Re, you rewind it, and LeBron. You can see his oh ankle touch the ground. God. I love but LeBron. If true. I see LeBron, like I, I feel like we would really we could sit down and have a real good conversation because I know I give him shit sometimes, but like I respect him. So yeah. we got to make that happen. We got to get him on a rush and just really clear the air. I feel like it's only right. Hey, we tried. We tried when we went to the Lakers game. You you know, we were trying. We're gonna we make were talking to Rich Paul. We were talking to Rich. We, we spent some time with Rich. And yeah, we did. Yeah. It needs to happen. He's a Cleveland boy. Yeah. Did yes. you see Saquon's backward hurdle? And is that the greatest play you maybe you've ever seen? How does that even play? happen? I don't know. Dude. What the <laughs> is he the best? Is he the best running back in the NFL? Obviously, Derrick Henry's doing Derrick Henry things, but is he the best running back in the NFL? I mean, this year, it's him and henry so far you gotta put josh up there too josh um but yeah i mean they're both they're they're all going crazy saquon's ridiculous he just just came naturally athletic shit that just like it's like backyard football type shit yeah that was like you get spinned around in madden and you accidentally click y and somehow you're flying in the air and he made it look so smooth and effortless it was it could have gone so south so quick Oh my it god! Takes Imagine he gets hit right on the tailbone. He he's just helicopter in the air. I don't. <laughs> Doing the splits. Was that. Yeah, like that a John insane. Elway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Literally, yeah, he was ridiculous. But I, I mean, that's my favorite play in a long time. Honestly, and, that's my favorite play maybe since OBJ's catch. But the, I mean, that game was a little bit of a highlight. You had Devonta Smith catch that one hand touchdown, got his leg down in the shin. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that was silly. They what about were Garrett Wilson. He Garrett Wilson was had Jumpman logo. Them. He had the Jumpman logo and had the one across the middle and snagged it with one hand and cribs it. He He's, looks ridiculous too. We got to talk. I know. If, as a player, why why does he wear his sleeves like that? He does a quarterback it's like a sleeve. It's like a thing now. I don't like know. like like swag. They're like longer yeah, than like a quarterback swag. sleeve. I don't know. I don't think I I, I personally I don't. You think it's swaggy? It. No. Max is gonna come out with it. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be like when he bought from uh, off the off online of his own jerseys. Yes. Yeah, obviously. And then you know the Cowboys. Cowboys continue to struggle, struggle hard. Obviously, yeah. a lot of people are pointing fingers. They caught Dak on the sideline saying we suck, which is never great when you pay the guy the most money by any. And Dak is also game. out now for multiple weeks with this hamstring injury. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, I mean, tough. what what it's do you? Right now. I've been saying, and Brogan, I tell you it every weekend. Like they have the weapons to be able to just flip the switch in their head where this is the game. And I've now I've officially you know lost hope that this would be the game. What like what what do the Dallas Cowboys do? Is it, is it McCarthy's gone? Like what like what's what's I what's to come? Pieces away. I don't yeah, know. Some pieces away and get the books back right and just gear up for next year. But Max, I do. I'm glad you said that, D, because I want when the trade rumors are going on with you, Micah on his show talked about how you are the most Raider player ever, and that you know he does not he doesn't think that you should go anywhere else, right? Mm-hmm. So I want you to put your GM hat on because we know that's what you like to do sometimes. Would you, if, if you're them? The, the there's chrome, all talk the about Chrome Hearts. Yes, yeah. Yes. yeah. What, a, hearts. what a hat. <laughs> <laughs> what a hat but so many people are saying trade micah now trade micah what would you do if you were the gm what do you think and just kind of this is your chance i think to rebuttal kind of from him earlier in the year you know i don't i don't like to just personally i don't like to sit here and guess or assume or tell yeah they should do that that's not who i am you know what i mean i'm not in that building so i can't really say um 
obviously Mike is saying that about me. That shit was dope. I got, you know, obviously got to see what he said. Um, and it's all due respect, you know what I mean? With between me and him, um, big shout out to Micah. Um, but he, yeah, it, it's tough. Like when you're the constant, when there's smoke, there's a typically a fire, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what they're going through. Like they, you got D law and Micah who've been out for a while. Now Dax her, they're struggling. You know what I mean? There's a lot of shit going on. You know, the, how the Cowboys, are always in the media. So it's just amplified and it's just constant shit going on. So I really don't know what you do in that, in that instance, you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. if you're in that building, I mean, and you're in the front office, like they, they know they have a better grasp on what's going on, but it's tough. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, do we trade away to try to get picks or, I mean, look at their roster. They have two pro bowl DNs. They got, a Pro Bowl quarterback, they got a Pro Bowl receiver, they got Pro Bowl alignment, they got Pro DBs. Bowl cornerbacks, they yep. got pro yep. they got players. That ain't the issue. So I mean, obviously the injuries and shit don't help, but they gotta really evaluate everything across the board. Um yeah. not just players, coaches, everything. Um they gotta figure out what they gotta do because you know, I feel like everybody in the league would say, damn, Cowboys are probably top five most talented teams um mm -hmm. and they won i mean last year they won 12 games so it's like yeah it, it's tough when you got injuries and all that all that shit going on it's it makes it even more you know complex and difficult yeah i agree yeah we'd like to play a little gm so i wanted you to yeah. get your little gift it's, back there. it's always fun brogan just because it's football season doesn't mean we don't appreciate the other sports out there basketball season just tipped off and our friends at Game Time, we can go ahead and pick our favorite teams or favorite player, like LeGoat James, and we can go ahead and look at the schedule and see that on Friday, this Friday, November 8th, the Lakers are playing the 76ers at home. That game's on ESPN, D, but if you want to have better seats and sit at home on your 90-inch screen, pop up into that Game Time app, baby. Whether it's courtside, maybe it's in the nosebleeds, but you won't know. But one way you will know is if you go over there to the Super Deal inside the Game Time app. Also, there's other tiers, of course, you know, Tier 1, Tier 2, those type of deals. But best part about it, D, there's no waiting. There's no waiting. It's all in pricing. Gives you the Super Deals. I literally just opened up the app, GameTime.co. And I found a seat, super deal, two tickets, row six, section 116 for only $288. That's right behind baseline view. Are you saying you customized your spot on the app? Customized my spot, found our price range, put, found the section, and got the seat that I wanted for all for $288, all in pricing, with a savings that's listed on the app. Best part is, D, it's not just sporting events. It's concerts. It's everything. It's not just that. So lock in the Game Time app. If you want to be a part of the action, go to your phone, download the Game Time app, and then create an account and use code The Rush. Again, I'm going to repeat that. Use code The Rush, T H E R U S H, for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We look forward to seeing you out there. What time is it? It's game time. Game time. What about the Lions going in a dome team playing in the rain at Lambeau and going out there and? performing the way they did are they the scariest team in the nfl in your opinion right now or do you think it's the chiefs that's the constant battle i mean they both look really good right now to be honest yeah. chiefs it's not like chiefs are out there blowing teams out but chiefs are just finding ways to win which they always do um kelsey's starting to come on mm -hmm. um yeah kelsey which he always does it takes him a little bit of time yeah you have 14 catches and then the Lions, I mean, Lions look crazy right now. I mean, they're they're lighting shit up. 28 touchdowns and only 24 incompletions in the I've last never, like five or six games. I've never seen that in my life. <laughs> Me either. I, I've it's never crazy. seen that myself. Aaron Rodgers was on Pat McAfee today talking about they need to give him some respect. Obviously, the coaches are doing a great job. But Jared Goff, he even himself, and we know he doesn't really give a whole lot of love, Aaron. So, And he said – People really need to be appreciating that guy right now. Who would have thought? Fact with Jerry Goff was Jesus on the bro. short end of the deal, so that the, he has the, the Rams the could highest go to the Super QB Bowl. rating. Yeah, he has the highest QB rating by far in the league. I think. You know, he's gone three games or three or maybe four games where he hasn't had an incomplete pass in the first half this year already. It's Not crazy. One. That's hard to do on air for everybody back home. It's hard to do that yeah. on air. Yeah. 
like with no defenders. No, he's <laughs> he's playing out of his mind right now. Yeah, the whole team. Is. I mean, they're balling, and they just signed yeah. Zadarius. They what do you think about that? Him. I mean, Zadarius is my dog. That's my dog. I fuck Zadarius. He's he's an OG. We uh we spent some time together in Vegas. He's he's a real good dude, and um hell yeah, he's a hell of a player. I mean, he can he can rush inside outside. Um, I mean, he's he's a piece they needed. You know what I mean? Just yeah. being real, like they obviously it sucks with Aiden getting hurt. Um, and then, you know, obviously my name was in the topic for about a month and a half straight, <laughs> but you know, Zadarius going there. Um, I'm excited for him. You know, I, I think it's gonna be. You know, it's going to help their team, and they got a really good team. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting. Good for him. I'm happy yeah. for him. No, he, he got out of the gutter, and he went into a, a, a contender. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, you left your Browns. So. Yeah, I mean, I, would, I don't blame him. Don't apologize to me. I got to apologize to him. Sorry you had to go through that. I'm go <laughs> win a bowl. <laughs> we'll do a Zen water drink. Everybody take a sip. Oh, take a sip. Got mine poured up in my happy Best day. water on the planet. That's great. New <laughs> shipment's coming in tomorrow, I think, so I can't Best wait. Best water on the planet. It's my last water bottle. Bro. Which one is I that? Have, I have 12 boxes sitting in my garage. I can't even fly through, the, through them fast enough. Does that you water? piss neon. Oh. Oh, yeah. You oh. have to. And you got my, to slate. Look at my you. Shit's, my shit's clear because all this I'm Zen water I drank. I'm repping the home drink. team, Max. Repping we, the we, team. You already know. Repping the brand. The family. You know? We got a big announcement coming, too, by the way, but I'll let you get to it, Darren. Oh, oh, really quick. Dude, he did question me on the podcast last week about if I was a true friend, if I'd come down to Ohio this week. He did. And he did. He say did. Some say something. Be... Say thank you. Say, oh, say. Baby Ella. Baby. I'm proud of you. I said baby instead of maybe. Hey, God. You're, a real, you're a real friend. You're a real all friend. Right. That's all and we I called you out. I wanted, you know, I wanted to put it out there in the public. Action. You. you came through about action and you're about action. So We love you. And, we, and Alley Cat. <laughs> and Alley Cat. Do you see me point? I said. Gore's here. <laughs> Gore. Gore. You know she's downstairs like, what? What? Oh, yeah. I know you're, honestly, really quick, because this might be a weird insight, but for you, I know it's so frustrating, and all this stuff is so hard for you mentally, and you obviously get back on the saddle every time, but, like, is it nice to see the people though afterwards, even on away games, and you know, like not just me. I'm not talking about me, but we had Brody, you had Preston, you had you had Darian's friend Luke there. Um, you had a bunch of people, but like, was that good? Is it nice for you to feel that way, or just I don't know? <laughs> no, it was. It, it's dope. You're so dumb. He's so stupid. You're so dumb. You can't help. help. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> can't help. You're an idiot. Um. Yeah, but no, being 100% real, like, I needed that. I mean, right after the game, like, obviously it's shitty, and I'm just like, what the f You know what I mean? I'm sick. Um, and getting to see the whole crew is fucking legendary. And Gary Owen and Shibuzi, I mean, it's a, they definitely cushioned the blow. All of you guys being there and just getting <laughs> to chop it up. Brody and his whole crew, I haven't seen them in a long time. Bro, and, I, heard, I said, Brody, I heard you're smoking cigarettes. He said, they're in the car right now. You gotta stop. I said, you gotta stop, buddy. Ripping darts. If he's ripping heaters sober, that's where he, oh, he's, yeah. he's made it. Yeah, I love Brody. I fucking love, love Brody. Guy. He was uh, there in uh in Cleveland when we were when we when he played in Cleveland a couple years back. I saw yeah. him, Eddie, like that whole crew. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he came to the Cincy playoff game too. When we played him. I believe so. Yeah, so Brody, I mean he's a real one. We need a big EMU re reunion after the season. I think it's time. It is time. Yeah. Down. We can just yeah. throw a big old uh, Eastern Michigan, you know, true MU collective party. Yeah, just throw a banger is. back in Ipsy. We'll run out. Well, we can't do Tower Inn because that's not there anymore. The new place so. in Depot Town. Oh, that place in Depot Town is dope. Nice it's restaurant, so good so bourbon bad. bar. Well, let's let's do that. We can we can maybe rent that place out, have a big old reunion. Proceeds go to the, the true MU collective so we can get these guys some money in their pocket. We can build a... <laughs> Build a program. Look what we just did. Look what we just did. I'm yeah. so down for that. That's God. it. Let's do it. And then we'll record some shows out there. Let's do it. We're in. We're doing it. We're doing just it. We put it Book it. There. Book it. Book it. Book it. Yep. Oh, we're going to get rowdy. I'll be crawling to the Eagle Crest. Yes. Yeah, you will. Well, happy, Dad. 
Oh my god, I love it. Oh, I'm all the in. River rain just drooling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be strapped yeah, up to go there now. Okay, I need to go back. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you do. Have you guys heard of Shoe Classic? Because <laughs> I have. Best selling shirts, hoodies, jeans, three, six, nine packs. They got all of it. Affordable pricing, great fit. It's gonna fit your body like a glove. Guarantee. It's trusted by over 4 million customers and 200,000 plus reviews. It's ultra comfortable, perfect fitting, and it's perfect for anything in your life. So if you're trying to be comfortable, if you're trying to be cozy, but also have some swag behind it, go get you some True Classic. You won't be disappointed. The holidays are here, and True Classic's ultra comfortable, perfect fitting essentials make for the perfect gift for you and the men in your life. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, Shop now and unlock big savings during their huge holiday sale. Just go to my exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash the rush to save. That's trueclassic.com slash the rush. Go do that right now. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. End the year with holiday cheer and thanks to True Classic. All right, let's get into the next segment. And it's going to be our dog of the day. Walk, talk to us. Dog of the day. Dog of the day. I mean, there was some. There was a lot of people flying around. I will say that. Got to give our honorable mentions. Trayvon Morig. I mean, this mother is balling. Um, he's out there cracking skulls and, and making a lot of plays. Adam Butler, John Jenkins. I can go on and on. Jack Jones, pick six. Um, Corian Bennett locking shit up. He's balling the fuck out. Yeah. But we're gonna have to go to the offensive side. Because this dude's a fucking dog. And I'm not talking about the Georgia Bulldog, Brock Bowers, because he's been balling. But our boy Jacoby Myers is a baller. And he balled out. He's always bringing attitude. If there's one guy that you can always rely on and trust and believe in to make big plays and big moments, it's Jacoby. Um, a dude like that, that's another one you're like, a dude, dude who does everything the right way, plays his ass off, absolute dog. It's the type of guy you want in the locker room. I'm sick for a, a guy like that. You know, I got to see him every day going through it. You know what I mean? And he will do anything to win. And so we will give him his flowers. And he could probably he probably could have been on here a few more times. He was on here last year, I believe, a couple times a as well. Yep. A lot. Um, so we got to give our respect when it's due. And our boy, Jacoby Myers, my brother, you're our dog of the day. <laughs> and we did a disservice it was it was unfortunate we couldn't get the episode we sat down chopped it up with him it was <sighs> great we couldn't get that out because there was a changing of hats and all that oh, stuff know. you know the hat maybe, oh, but, maybe one of, of these games yeah. in vegas for a home game when we come back out again this year maybe we can get him to slide to the studio maybe even call in no That'd we need cool. to we yeah he to. was we awesome gotta, great combo great and you know it was just that was a funny one was fun. yeah he's he's all time yeah. He's all time. Recurring. He's going to keep it real. <laughs> all right. We're going to do a quick uh, look ahead into the bye week. I know that you had talked about, um, you know, it's it's a time for everybody to refresh, get away, come back a, a, and focus on the back half of the season. Um, what's your bye week look like? And what was the message to the team? Because we know idle hands, it always seems to be the uh, the time where things go wrong, right? People get in trouble. People do dumb shit. Like, what's the message to the team? And so that you guys can come back and finish the second half of the season off strong. Yeah. Um, you know, as I don't know the right word, as crazy as it been, as shitty as it been, as it has been, you know, being two and seven to be in this position. Um, you know, I feel like the meetings and everything went, went really well. You know what I mean? We, you know, after the team meeting and everything like that, as a D line, like we got together and we really, even the last two days, like we were in there the last two days watching film and it was the energy was elite um had a lot of great conversations kept you know a lot of real conversations um but we have dudes who are bought in you watch the film you, you talk about watching the film watch the defense fly around you know what i mean it's not the exact results we want but we have a lot of guys stepping in um playing new roles playing more than they had in the past and dudes are playing their asses off doing everything they can to try to win and uh that's all you can ask for. So I love, you know, our group. Our, our D line is like a brotherhood. Um, we take it real serious, and 
Um, you know, the message for the team is stay dialed in. We have eight, eight opportunities. You know what I mean? It's not, oh, we got to finish the year. It's no, we have eight opportunities to go out there and be the best version of ourselves. And we're playing in the National Football League. If you feel bad for yourself, and can go somewhere else. You know what I mean? It's like, we are where we are, um, but we have an opportunity to win every single game. You know what I mean? That's the reality. So um, if you don't have that mindset, then I don't want to be around you. And I feel like that's kind of what our message was. And we're, we're going to come back ready to work. So personally, I'll be taking care of my body, doing what I do. I've been in there working the last two days. I'm going to keep working the rest of the week. Um, me and Rach got, you know, a little, little shindig plan. We're going to disappear a little bit. Nice. Um, but yeah, it'll be good. Um, and be ready, you know, back to business and, and doing what we do um, come next week. So we're excited. Um, I'm just excited, you know what I mean? Getting fully healthy, an opportunity to give my my ankle a little bit of rest, get more rehab, um, but also get the work in at the same time and come back and be the best version of myself the rest of the season. So I'm excited. Let's go. I'm, I'm excited for you, man. I know you work your ass off um, and you deserve rest. You deserve to be able to take it easy get your ankle right and become that best version of yourself like you were at the beginning right. of the season. So Damn you right. you and Rach enjoy that time off. Um, baby Ella, of course, we got to give her love. She's probably going to love seeing dad all the time now during the season. But Oh, yeah. She's, um, she's the greatest. Is baby Ella going with you? No. No. Yeah. A little vacation. No. That a boy. A little vacation. A little vacation. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're okay. going to number two. Go ahead, then. <laughs> Nine, All right, brother. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Let's get into Give our uh, stogies and I'm good. Let's get into our All Rushman right. segment here. Who we got? We got our top three Rushman of the week. All right, so let's get into our Rushman of the week, baby. Talk yes, to us, Rushman Walk. of the week. Let's hit it. Uh, so we got three Rushmen of the week. You already know it's my favorite segment. Not even a question about it. Like all our segments, love all our segments, but we love this you. one takes the crown and I love you guys too. So, mm -hmm. all right. Um, anyway, um, at number three, first timer, this motherfucker is a savage. He is a big individual. Um, he constantly, you could tell is talking shit, um, going back and forth with the, with the bills on Instagram and shit. He's always, uh, you know, I think he was berating some fans after one of their wins last year. This dude, uh, he doesn't shy away from, you know, standing standing in the fire. So I respect it. This dude had three tackles, two sacks, and a forced fumble. I watched the game. It's Thursday nighter. Um, he had a big fourth quarter sack as well. Um, and he's getting better as a player. He's rushing inside a little bit, rushing outside. Um, Michael Clemens, big shout out to you, brother. You're our number three rushman of the week. Keep doing your thing. Good boy. Big dog. Boy, Big dog. You ever do those uh, player intros, you know, where they do, like, Max Crosby used for Michigan? That mother yeah. popped his head in and was like, Michael Clemens. <laughs> deep as, yeah. Deep yeah, as he, fuck. I was like, I had to re rewind it. I'm like, who the fuck said that? <laughs> yeah, he's the Terminator. There's yeah, he no is. Um, coming in at number two on our Rushman of the Week list, this guy, he's, he's an animal. I mean, he's well known. Dude is one of the most consistent, most dangerous pass rushers in the league. A dude that I look at as competition, but also a good friend. Dude that we compete and fight for the same thing every single year. Um, dude's an absolute freak. Five tackles, three sacks. Reigning defensive player of the year, Miles Garrett. Big shout out to you, brother. You're our number two rushman of the week. Three piece Miles. chicken nugget. That must be built like an action figure. Yeah, he he's built in a different lab. That is yeah. for sure. He yeah, he's a freak of nature. Um, as hard as this to, you know as as it is to put this dude at number one because this was against my team. Mm -hmm. He had four tackles, four sacks, and a forced fumble. He went federal and he did his thing. Um, this dude, another one. One of the better rushers in the league, super consistent, great pass rusher, wide array of moves and plays his ass off. Got a ton of respect for him. Um, got to chop it up after the game with him. But with the four-piece chicken nugget, I mean, you, you got to be number one on the Rushman of the Week list. And it's our guy, Trey Hendrickson. Big shout out to you, brother. Keep doing your thing. No bias on the rush. No bias on the rush. No bias. Keep it real. Yep, no We're bias on the rush. Real. 
We gotta find 100%. him some buffs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, we might not need him. No. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't need him. He's he's doing he's doing his thing. That's for sure. Give us a message going into the bye week. <sighs> message going into the bye people. week. Mad talk motivated. to the, talk to the fans. Talk to the Condor Cartel. Leave us on a high note. That's what we do. You ain't got to say it, Darian. This is what we f- do. This is Every how we week. live. Yep. This is how we breathe. We expect greatness in everything we f- do. And that's on the field. That's off the field. That's in business. That is mm-hmm. on our podcast. We don't f- around. We don't play games. We are here to win. And that's all we're about. So to the rush, to obviously, we'll start with this. To the Condor Cartel, we f- love you guys. Keep tuning in. You guys are killing it. We need more subscribers, and you guys are delivering. We just need a little bit more. Just keep keep clicking that button. Like and subscribe. We need more comments, more likes, subscribes. Keep doing what you're doing. And we appreciate all the love and support because the views are going up. Everyone, The attention, everything, you guys are, are, are showing real love and, and getting some eyes on this show. So we love you guys. Keep showing up. Keep supporting. And to the Raider Nation, I f- love you guys, and I feel bad because the shit is unacceptable. Two and seven is unacceptable. Losing – is unacceptable. I came to the Raiders to be a part of that change, and that hasn't changed. My mindset every single day is to be the best in the world at what the fuck I do across the board. And that's from the simple shit, from the food I eat to the way I sleep, to recover, to what I do on Sundays, to what I do in the building, what I do in practice, everything across the board. And that shit is never going to stop. I don't give a fuck if we never win a game ever again. Obviously, I'll lose my mind if that ever happens, but I'm not going to put that out in the universe. I'm just saying to make a point, my approach is never going to change and you're only going to see a a better and the best version of me going forward. Um, Love you guys. Keep tuning in. I know times are hard right now, but at the end of the day, that's reality. That's where we're at. We can't change the past, but all we can do is control the now and the present. And that's what I'm going to keep doing. Brogan, DT, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys being there for me no matter what it is even in the hard times you guys probably thought i was going to ghost you and shit yesterday you know it was a long day i'd have some hard conversations but at the end of the day you guys are always in my corner so i fucking love you guys too and i'm gonna give you guys your flowers because y'all are my brothers and uh that's all we got on the rush this week y'all keep tuning in we love you i said a few times but i think they bleep my out so yeah yeah we're good if you're a <laughs> doubter if you're a negative person if you're not about that action yeah. we don't want you around we're gonna keep winning so we love you guys that peace. is the peace. Peace. mic drop peace walk up in this bitch like yeah i'm really him